Hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome to another edition of the Miss Texas Show. Is your co-host, Melissa Santana, as always, super, super excited to be with you all and just super happy that you're even tuning in, listening to us, taking time out your day. Um, you all might be seeing this recording after the fact, but I will let you all know that today is that snowy, snowy day, so I hope people are staying safe because over here in Ohio, it's snowing up a storm. So yeah, so I hope oh, wow. Yeah, it's snowing up here. So yeah, so I <laughs> hope everybody's being warm, staying safe and all that. But also this month, we have a lot to celebrate. So it is um, a, little, a lot to celebrate and a lot of awareness to bring. So it is actually last month, uh, January, we wrapped up Human Trafficking Awareness Month. We also wrapped up what was known as Stalking Awareness Month. This month is Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month. So look out, we'll have some stuff about that. But it is also Blackity Black Black History Month. So this is a time to be proud to celebrate all the achievements of Black people around the world, but also just the great uh, achievements, but also the great contributions to society um, that yeah. are possible with all Black artists, with all Black people. And so we are super excited to be able to take part in that. And so with that, we have a wonderful, wonderful guest today to help us kick off Black History Month and be able to celebrate and do all that great jazz. But before that, I want to formally welcome everyone to the Miss Texas show, where we showcase life and Texas and beyond, and highlight amazing survivors of traumatic events, family violence, sex trafficking, sexual abuse, and community leaders who share community resources. Under our segment, Military Time, we invite military and veterans who would like to share with us their experiences, both during and after their military service. We run this segment in partnership with the National Veterans Chamber of Commerce. We would like to invite those who have overcome traumatic events and would like to share um, and are ready to now not only share, but also help others. Under our Beauty for Ashes segment, we invite fellow pageant sisters. So these are winners, nominees, artists, musicians, actors, models, and dancers, as well as survivors uh, um, who are not ambassadors for the cause to share with our audience their lives and the impact they have made. Our show runs twice a month. So if you would like to become a guest on our show, please email us at MsUSATexas at gmail.com. So that's M-S-U-S-A-T-E-X-A-S at gmail.com. Or you can message us on our Facebook, which is at MsUSATexas as well. Um, you can also make a donation at www.hopepyxglobal.org to help us help more people and so with that being said um now we can get to our lovely 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 host which we um super excited to have is edna white um edna white is an economic development chair for the brookhaven town naacp she is a past libn diversity and inclusion award winner she is the of colors diversity black history honoree she is a 22 time author. I mean, not, nothing too, like, I just feel like that's something you just cannot say lightly. <laughs> 22, just want to make sure everybody heard the number. 22 time author and public speaker, as well as a podcast host, because obviously she doesn't do enough. You know what I'm saying? She got to make sure she also <laughs> airwaves and, you know, keeps us also informed. So with that, we have the sincere pleasure and honor of having you. So we just have you to set, set aside some time for us. Uh, but we are truly honored to have you on the show. And so, of course, Edna, you know, what I'm excited is, you know, just to learn more about you. First up, you know, since it's our first time having you and all that, just, you know, a little bit about you and, you know, your journey, just, you know, more about you. Oh, uh, you say about me. I don't know. You want me to grab that resume out? Like, come on. <laughs> right? I want to watch that. <laughs> no. Um, well, I can tell you in just the practical sense. Oh, somebody else is in? Just a practical sense. I'm a mom. I am a daughter. I am a sister. Um, and I love loving people and inspiring them to do what they got to do and to have a better life. On the other side of the spectrum, I am a childhood sexual abuse survivor. And um, I advocate for children all over because that is my number one thing is protecting them and uh, preventing childhood sexual abuse in any type, any form. And I work now with adults who are feeling those reactions from childhood sexual abuse. I am um, a writer of 22 books, um, which I think three are bestsellers on Amazon. And I just got picked up by Amazon and Apple the other day. Yay! 
Hey. I'm from the so I'm really excited. Um, and so um, I'm doing, you know, I'm really excited to be on the airways, as you say. Um, but I really like advocate and I'm a foot, I'm a foot on the ground. Well, they want to say boots, but see, I, I think I'm foot because like I feel everything that people feel. So I'm a foot on the ground kind of person. And I work very closely with people in my community. I am also the president of a chamber, Creative Gordon Heights Chamber of Commerce, and I'm very proud to be the president there. So that's me. In a nutshell, I loved my favorite word in the whole world. Do you want to hear it? Sure. Ready? F-U-N, fun. If you're not having fun at work, you're not having life. If you're not having fun at home, you're not having life. If you're just not having fun and being creative, you're not enjoying life. Amen. That's what a kid does, right? A kid does that, right? They love to have fun. <laughs> so I want to be a kid at heart forever. <laughs> I agree with that. No, I definitely agree. Yeah. And I definitely think that we put, yes, with all the responsibilities that we have and all the things we yeah. have to do, we definitely put that fun word in the closet sometimes. We don't even <laughs> get it out. You know, we don't even dust it off sometimes. Like, no. it's, just like, that. like it's just like, it's just not. We put it behind it. dirty clothes, clothes that we don't even wear anymore. We exactly. put it behind that. Like, poor fun. <laughs> so I definitely know. I definitely agree that it's a beautiful yes. philosophy and definitely one that more of us need to embrace. Um, but I also just love that in order for you to have gotten here, you know, where you're making fun the priority, you know what I mean? You're doing all these great things and you're balancing all that. I definitely, I just want to like visit. I don't want to live in this area of your life, but I'm definitely sure. curious, like, um, you know, since you are this incredible survivor and I feel like you just radiate such a beautiful energy, you know, in oh, general. So you. I feel like you definitely live that whole, you know, the uh, philosophy that you, you know, you speak. And so I'm yeah. just curious, like, I love that because of that, clearly your light has not been dimmed. But right. at one point, I do believe that obviously there were individuals in your life. Oh, sure. Died, exactly. Who tried to do sure. that. So I'm just curious if you could at least just for a little bit, like tell us a little bit about what that was like, okay. unfortunately. Um, I, I was miserable. I will tell you that. <laughs> I was miserable. I was very angry, very angry. And um, I, I often talk about this because my survivor, one of my um, perpetrators I lived with, I lived with for a very long time. And so I was able to um, experience forgiveness and not know I know I was was doing it. And then when I realized I was doing it, I was like, that's why I'm such a free bird, because I was able to forgive every day. Because imagine seeing the person that perpetrates you every day and being able to put on a different face, a different and, and not have any remorse. But as I got older, it built up you know, kind of built up. And when I was 18, I decided, this is my, my suicide story. It's not bad, but I decided that I was going to get, um, I had a child at 17. And so I decided that I was going to get on the train track, sit on the train tracks, wait for the train. And um, I was miserable. I was, you know, I was crying. My son was like maybe seven or eight months old. And and I was like miserable. And I was like, I, I just can't do it anymore. You know, I'm not happy. I'm, I'm, I'm miserable, you know? And so I went down, I walked down the street with my son and it was in summertime, walked down the street with a seven or eight month old who's in between and walked down, sat on the train tracks and I'm waiting for this train to come. Cause it's, you know, I'm just waiting. It, it was in like the woods kind of area. So you had to walk a through little path and, you know, the train come, they couldn't really see you if you on the, on the um, track. So I sat there and, um, and I was sobbing and sobbing. And I was like, I just can't do this anymore. Cause I was miserable. I was really miserable. I wasn't happy. I felt that, you know, no one was ever going to want me. Life wasn't going to be great. I was just going to be just nothing, you know? And um, I felt like nothing. I really felt like nothing. And before I knew it, I'm crying. My son's sitting in my lap. And before I knew it, um, hours went past. <laughs> so, you know, I, I'm looking for the train. I'm saying, no, where, where the hell is the train? You know, I'm like, what train? <laughs> you know? And I'm a character when I'm talking to the universe or to God. I'm really, I'm this, that's exactly how I talk to him. I'm like, you know, come on, where's the train? So, I sat there and it started getting dark and I'm saying, there's the train. Train never came. 
And I stood up and I said, dang, I can't even kill myself right. You know, and this is me and God's standing joke, you know, it wasn't my time. And I remember coming home and I was still crying. I just cried like all night and I was supposed to take my, my son to see Spider-Man in the next town over. So we took the bus in and I was crying and he was wiping my, my, my oldest son, he's 40 now, but he was wiping my tears and, and, and I'm just crying. A lady walks up to me, puts my, her hand on my shoulder. In her hand was this card and fell down and I didn't really pay attention to it. And so um, I get off the bus and um, no, I didn't, I didn't get off the bus. She got off the bus and she, she touched me again. She goes, it'll be okay. And I was like, okay. Yeah, as long as it's Tuesday. So I'm still crying. And I took my son, you know, to see Spider-Man. Um, and I'm, and I, and believe me, I'm blubbering. I'm like, literally people are looking at me like, what is wrong with this? I literally could not stop sobbing. So I get back on the bus on the way back home. And, um, I never looked at the card, I looked at the card and you would never believe it. I know that it was like, uh, universally in, inspired at the card. And it was, um, it was a psychologist that was two blocks over from my house that I could walk. And it was someone who specialized in sexual childhood, sexual abuse. So that began my healing. I went to her and she gave me all the tools and I went for several years and she gave me all the tools, um, to kind of get started on that in my journey. But we know that we you get the tools, but they, they sit in the box <laughs> and we don't use them and we don't use them. So let's just say, I'm going to speed this up. Two fails marriages later. Okay. And three kids later. Um, and a whole lot of crying and a whole lot of misconceptions and habits that I, I, I kind of created myself from the patterns of generations. Did I realize at 45, I woke up one day and I was like, wait a minute, something's got to change. So my, my, my divorce was the best day of, the, of my life. Like it was like, I don't even know why, but I called all my girlfriends. I was like, we're having a party. Listen, like, what are we having a party for? I said, we're having a, a freedom party. Little did I know the freedom party was not about the divorce. It was about me coming alive and me realizing that me needed to be taken care of. And I had long hair, um, sort of like you. Okay. I know you got to pull back and all that, but I cut, I literally cut my hair off totally to number one. You know what a number one is, right? And I was like, I'm not processing my hair anymore. I'm not doing anything. I want to see what's under. It was my revelation to see what was under and what I was really about. Because I, when I came to New York, I, I, I came from um, Alabama. When I came to New York, I was the only black person in my area, Patchogue, I lived in Patchogue. I was the only black person. So I introduced braids to my town. They were like, what is those things? What is that? And they were feeling me and, and they made me feel uncomfortable, but I didn't know any better. Like I just like, eh. I don't care. You know, it's like, it's, it's hair, you know, I don't know what else to tell them, but it was, it was interesting that I wasn't shocked by that. That shocked me. Um, and, and being different shocked me. Um, I think my own insecurities did it, you know, like my own stuff, like my own stuff, my, my childhood abuse, you know, cause I was abused from five to 15. I, that did it for me. That kind of hurt me. And, therefore made, made me make so many bad decisions, you know? Um, and I'm glad I, I made those decisions. At least I made a decision. <laughs> I look at it now, I made a decision and not, not made like, you know, was in the middle. Cause one thing I don't like is being like, in you know, a quandary. Should I, should I, I got chocolate. Like, it's like having ice cream, chocolate, or vanilla, chocolate, or vanilla, and they both melt in and you have to make a decision. You can eat them both but you have to make a decision, you know? <laughs> so it's, I, you know, I laugh at myself now, all the things that the decisions that I've made and I've learned from them. And what I'm doing now is I'm teaching women of color how to break, not put them away, not like in our closet, like we just talked about in the closet, but break those generational habits that we learned from the patterns that our families gave us. So I, I help with, you know, breaking those because 
if you're not happy in your regular life, right? You're not happy. You're just not happy. You think that you're going to be great in business? Absolutely not. <laughs> you think that you're going to manage somebody very well? Absolutely not. You, it, what happens with you happens to everybody. It's, it's, it spills over. So I teach them that, you know, you can live in your purpose and your purpose can change from year to year or, or 10 years, but you can live in it, but you can be purposeful when you do it, but not take those habits with you. So that's what I do. Oh, man. Man, and there was just so much there that I'm just, <laughs> but I just think because what kind of divine, you know, an incredible intervention was that, you know what I mean? For that to even have like cross your path at that time. But then even when we go back to the bus itself and the fact that it did not come, it wasn't meant to, it was not your time. Was, you were not supposed to get yeah. on it, you know? So it was, it just, it was not. And, Right. And, and I think it's, it's incredible, though, like you said, though, that in the moment it frustrated you, right, to the point where you're like, wow, mm -hmm. I, this is something that I made the decision to do, universe, why can't you get in line with what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> made the Simple decision. That. Yeah, exactly. Like, come on, like, just get with it, with what I'm trying yeah. to do here. So it's just incredible to me. But clearly it was like, I'm sorry, I am. This is my answer. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Answer. So right. definitely. Me. No, I am. You just yeah. don't know it yet. I am. <laughs> exactly and then see and then but that's why i think we got to be able to open up our ears because right. we're not getting an answer and it's like we're getting a loud one that was actually a loud oh, yeah. oh, powerful oh, yeah. answer that you were getting oh yeah oh no, you have such great purpose that no you can you can feel as miserable as you feel right now and i'm mm -hmm. sorry for that but at the same time you're going to use that and you're going to turn that into such power right. for other people right. and that's why you're going to be able to connect so well to other people because you've oh, been sure. there you oh, felt yeah. that misery, you know what I mean? You know what it's like better than anyone. And I think that, yeah, those are the people that are better served to help others. Like, right. it doesn't really help when other people try to come in and like, with all the best intentions, but they don't necessarily have, you know, that that true empathy that is needed sure. to be able to make sure. that genuine connection. So I just think- right incredible from the beginning like, like that happened but then and like you said even that you got your tools from someone that you like you know didn't even like plan to meet like that's just yeah. incredible to me I mean I've done therapy too but I I looked her up I ain't gonna lie that was Google all day you know what I mean <laughs> Google, I, I listen, <laughs> listen no one it wasn't like in my and, and I and I think I can you're a woman of color we're yeah. told to be strong we're told to be strong Absolutely. now what does that mean what does it even mean Right. Because <laughs> we're thinking in our heads, okay, that means the muscles, you know, I got some, but that means the muscles, you know, and you gotta be fit and you gotta oh, yeah. you gotta betray like all of this stuff. I had to hang that up because that wasn't true for me. Because strong didn't mean that. Strong mean means to be able to embrace your emotions. Right. When exactly. you're emotional, you gotta feel it. Ooh, you're crying all I over the place, you're eating the ice cream, you know. Go with it. And then, but like Jan Levan Sant says, cry with an agenda. Cry with an agenda. Now you finished all that. What's what's what you gonna do next? Yeah, what don't do just be crying for no reason, but what are you going to do next? And I think that's what really resonated with me when I as I got older, but when I, I always, um, I always leaned towards, I, I'm supposed to be strong. I'm supposed to be this, take it all in and don't let nobody see you sweat. Remember that commercial? No, you too young. <laughs> oh, man. Don't let them see you sweat. It was a commercial. Don't let them see you sweat. You know, that was a commercial under, it was underarm deal. Don't let them see you sweat. You know, don't let them see you sweat. Don't let them see you get emotional, you know, put your hair together, look good on the outside, but inside you are crumbling. Like you get home, you, you're, you're eating everything up, you know, you're eating everything up, you're drinking everything up, you're, you're smoking everything up, you're, you're just alone, you're, you're depressed, you're, you're, you're separated from everyone. You do all those things in secret in the home, but you think it doesn't show? Right. Do you think that doesn't, because even the strongest sculpture starts cracking after a while when it's under pressure. Right. Oh, amen. It really does. It Say really that. does. So we, we as, as black women, color, you know, women of color, we're, we're told to be strong. Yeah, you're strong. You know, whatever your last name is, do you know what you are? You know, my last name is, you're a white, you know, you know, your last name, you, we're, you are this one. And we all got that. Like, Okay, what does that mean? Like, what does that mean? 
you know. Absolutely. And I definitely agree. Oh, and then speaking of the color stuff, let's, let's talk about it. I don't know if viewers uh, know, because I'll definitely introduce myself for a minute. But yes, I am. Um, I'm Puerto Rican. And so like ethnicity wise. So, yep. So I'm like fully Puerto Rican. Both parents came over. But I am one of the Puerto Ricans who embraces my Afro Latinidad. Like, I feel like, yes, like, you know, there are many Latinos, including Puerto Ricans who are black. But I think there are yes. I know a lot of them that deny their blackness. I'm not one of them. I definitely feel right. like I want to be embraced. But I definitely yeah. think, it, yeah, it's, right. it's an interesting thing because I'm like, oh, it gives us such a good platform. Let's definitely talk about it, actually, because I definitely think that it, you know, it goes right into society. Yeah, because I've seen it in college. I've seen it as an adult. Like, it's all I've ever seen. And even when oh, I yeah. Exactly. And even when I, and like yourself, we can definitely talk about this because we wanted to go into, you know, your journey as an adult now, you know, and all these great things that you're doing. I mean, hello, Branch, you know, president, all these great things. But I'll definitely say that, yeah, I would go to like national conferences and I would definitely be one of the darkest people there. It would be like some, you know, you know, people that they would get other, but it would definitely be, I would be one of the darkest individuals. And I'm just like, okay, so are we trying to get like a certain, you know what I mean? Like we're not like, or if we do do people of color, they have to look white. Like as I was just right. thrown right. off by that. Yeah. And it just right. kind of like blew me. I was just like, wow, I'm not, I'm not understanding like what I need to do in order to navigate these spaces. So it did, it actually like created a lot of like the ambiguity for me. I started right. questioning a lot. So yeah, I, but I have definitely always loved seeing color, like true color. Yeah, <laughs> whenever I'm absolutely. In I agree with you. I totally agree with you. I love yeah. it. I think that um, what you said was really important because women of color, I, I, I often talk about this because I work at, with Long Island Coalition for the Homeless. And so, and I'll say, it, you know, um, I don't have any qualms and no devotion to any Body. Like I don't, I didn't know all of my Caribbean background. I had to look it up, you know. You know, my dad had died before I could ask him, you know, where we're from. And my grandmother died when I was getting ready to ask her. She died, you know. So I couldn't ask, you know. But I once I found out, I embraced it really. I mean, I really embraced it, and it makes you such a a, a, um, a complete person. It, 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 you know, when they talk about the chakras. And you have your feet on your root to the ground. Um, and I do yoga. So it's always, I'm always shaking. And, and one day my friend, she's a yogi. She said, it's because you don't know your roots. And so I, I decide, okay, I'm going to go find out. So I'm, you know, knowing where you're from, you start to, you, you really have to be very confident in what you do because it brings about imposter syndrome. So we start doubting, well, we're not good enough, you know women of color have that such they we have a we have a force to be reckoned with but when it comes to being coming out into society so let's think about this you get up in the morning you don't have children right you have children you have children i actually have three <laughs> i got three kids oh huh yeah I got you three have kids. three girl you look like a whole baby a whole baby <laughs> <laughs> i appreciate that so well, that's, oh. that's great yeah, that's that. really, really great. Oh, see, that's wonderful. Okay, so you get up in the morning, you have children of color. Now, all that's going in, on in this atmosphere, you're thinking and you're worried about them, right? You're mm -hmm. like, I hope nothing happens to them at school, you know, and I hope that the teachers are nice to them. We have a whole different dialect than women who are white, whole different in the morning, because that's our, we're, it's on our brain. You no, know, it, it's automatic. Pray for my kids to be safe. Then when we get dressed to walk out the door, now I hope nobody gives me no attitude right. when I go into this grocery store and, and a white woman's in next to me clutching her pocketbook like I'm going to see. I'm in the same store you in. Mm -hmm. and you, 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 we got all of this to worry about. Then we're driving while black, right? We don't know if a cop's going to pull us over and just have some excuse and snap us through the window. We don't know. We have all these anxieties, but we control them. Then we get to a job that we love. Okay, we love it. We, we, know, we, we know the cause. We, we, we feel the cause. And we get there and we look, we're the only black or brown or woman of color in the room. Right. And then when we get ready to speak, guess what happens? We are, when we say something that's so profound, they're scared. They don't know what to say. They're like, oh. They can't even feel it. 
and it, it, it used to, it started to irritate me to the point I started falling back and not saying nothing. So I would sit there and not say anything. And you know, the universe spoke to me and said, why are you doing that? I found out that I was being intimidated, that imposter syndrome, that I was being intimidated. And I said, wait a minute, I got a bachelor's degree. And guess what I got more than that? I got lived experience. And that don't, that don't hurt. That is more than what they ever will have. So I work around a lot of so social workers. And there's nothing wrong with social workers. But I do believe they all have to have some type of experience when they're working with certain populations. They have to have that experience and that empathy, like you said. And sometimes they say stuff and I'd be like, let me cut my camera off because my face sure will show what's going on. And I, and, I, and I say why they, because they're not, they're not feet on the ground, you know? And you wanna, like you said, you wanna make a space for it, but here's how you make a space for you to be, to, to be shining for who you are, is be confident. Because we're taught, women are taught, we can't be confident because guess what? That means you're prideful. That means you, you, know, you, you, you think you're, you're better than you're vain. That does not mean that. That doesn't mean that. When you're confident, it's a different, whole different than vain. Vain means that you go around telling people, you know I'm cute. You know I'm cute. You, that, that's what you do. That's vain. That's vanity. But when you walk around knowing that I know what I know, and you, 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 or you can't tell me no different. Maybe I don't know everything, but what I do know, I sure enough know. So you can't tell me nothing. And that's, that's, the difference is you acquired all the skills that you have, whether it be, if you were an at-home mother, you know how to do accounting, you know how to make meals, you know, on a budget, okay? You keep a budget, you know how to maintain the time schedule, you know all of that. You have skills that most, some people don't have. And, and we need to appreciate that. I, I tell my clients all the time, Take out your resume and look your resume over. Just look at it and be like, oh, I did that? When you start doubting yourself, just take your resume out and look at it. It's so important as black and colored women to look at what we've done and appreciate it. We don't ever, when we do something, do we ever celebrate it? We celebrate it for a minute. Like, you know, we graduate from high school. Yay, everybody's yay. But do if we write a book, do we ever go, oh, party time, you know, I wrote a book. Do we ever do that? Do we ever celebrate? No, we don't celebrate that. If we, if we did a project at the job and it was all you, right? It was all you. Like I did that thing. Do we celebrate it? No, you gloss over it and go to the next one. And then you be desensitized to celebrating and, and appreciating yourself. So you get to the point that nothing is, is satisfying because you haven't celebrated. Even the smallest of things, celebrate them. Women of color, you heard what I said? Celebrate every win. Even if you got to go sit out at Starbucks. I don't know if there's a Starbucks out by you. Probably is. But go sit at Starbucks, get you a five, six dollar coffee, cross your leg. You know, I did that thing today. Sip on it and celebrate it. That's what you got to do. And I do that very often with myself. And you know, but you know, women of color gotta do that for themselves. They just gotta. Absolutely. Oh, and again, how many gems did you drop? I gotta make sure. I gotta make sure I do the highlight real, real quick. So yeah. <laughs> Um, and I got to take advantage once again of the platforms that you uh, provided. So um, as you mentioned, absolutely, definitely the women, you know, and even going back to what you said about, um, you know, so, so now that you know that I do have some kids, I got a little bit of age on, I still might be young, I still might be young though, so I'm still take that. But, okay. um, but I have definitely heard, I don't, I don't remember the commercial, you're right. But I do remember the saying, you know, of course, like you don't let them see you sweat and right. enough that I feel like it's literally been entrenched in our society to the point where we right. still say that phrase very yes. much. So like it's literally, you know, and it is true. It's like, OK, so like if people do see you sweat in order, if they see that weakness, you know, what I mean, they're seeing too much vulnerability. and You can't do that. Right. You, know I mean? you got to like buckle up like that's not right. you're not really because it almost makes it seem like you're not put together. That's that's right. the thing. And I feel like right. what's what we're trying to make sure that we shatter. And that's what I love about what you're talking about is that we got to shatter that misconception. We got to shatter yeah, that. It's myth. a whole because misconception. Absolutely. Because healing is messy. It is messy. And so it like, is messy. 
Right. There's a lot that goes into it. And I feel like you, but you can still be a beautiful mess. You know what I mean? In the midst of that, because at least you're dealing with it. You're, you're taking those steps to reclaim, you know, what happened to you and to reclaim your future, which you deserve. So like you can't control what happened in the past that did happen to you and all of that, but you also don't have to live there. And you can absolutely, as a result, reclaim what's going to happen to you later. And you don't be able to like set yourself on a great path for something, you know, more, you know, greater for yourself. So I think definitely that part, I definitely want to Start, start there but i think also chakras so i do got my little chakra <laughs> control, y'all got it on, got it on. Oh, hey. got necklace. so yeah and, so i agree i agree that there's an important and you know if, if chakra ain't your thing we get it you know to each his own right. whatever you do whatever right. different you, um but it just it, but it does talk about balance and so what we right. what i love is that um you know like i said for those who are fans and those who may not it is a great importance to that you know what i mean to just yeah. having things that help you to regain balance Right. Um, you know, whatever it does, whatever you need at the end of the day, because you do we're good regardless, like we mentioned, we did mention moms who might be moms. Um, or yeah. no, I'm not moms who might be moms, women who might be moms. Right. We know yes. that there might we be women the role who are, of being a mom. Exactly. Have a role oh, being yeah, mom. we might be talking to women exactly who are like bomb aunties. We know that yeah. there might be mom aunties. Exactly. We know that there might be, yeah, but either way. What we also yeah. know about women in general is that hustle and bustle. Women usually are the main ones running, ripping and dodging, you know, dipping and dodging, doing so many things. Right. And there's usually a lot of hats that right. women wear. Absolutely. Especially if you're a woman of color. We ain't got we ain't got a lot. And so like even I that's right. Exactly. And even Eileen, shout out, because I mean, I love that she provides the platform. That's why I share it with her. Yeah. You know, she's an Asian woman. I know she's a right. you know, woman of color. Might not share the exact, you know, there's all different experiences, but definitely there's experiences because I know there's been a lot that's happened in China, you know, and all these different right. things. But like, you know, there's all these different things that we can share. But it definitely that also that shared experience, like you're saying, as a woman and just as a person who carries a lot. And so that's what we yeah. want to make sure that we speak to is that right. that load we know can be heavy, you know, whatever it looks like. And so you have every right to, you know, take advantage of whatever resources you have and whatever you do to not only lighten that load, um, but address it and then still get back to what you said, because let's not forget that Edna dropped a very jam at the beginning, which was a word of the year that some of us need to use, which is fun. And for some of us, that might have been the first time we said that word in like months. And that's not good. We need to dust that word off and be able to do it. But maybe... Right. And if we're even if you even heard the word and you sighed, that might be a sign that some some gotta give because you're like, <laughs> oh, I can do that right now. Like that's a problem. That's a problem. It's a problem. <laughs> we gotta talk about that. Exactly. So that's why like we might yeah, need to start problem. there. But if, but also I do want to shout out um, but to uh, uh finish off the mom thing. Yes, for mm-hmm. those who might not know, yep, three babies. So I got three girls. Oh, they nice! Are, yes, they are four, four years old, six and eight. So I know. Oh, girl! Oh, yeah. uh, come on now. And that's yeah. actually why. So yeah, for those who don't know, behind the scenes, when it goes into doing these things, and then I had a schedule. Yeah, part of it was my responsibilities, but also part of it was that uh, they go with dad every other week, and so I had to coordinate with that. So I had to coordinate with the dad schedule. Management time. Management. Oh, you already know. Schedule. You already know. So like you said, that's why. Like you said, I agree. Accountant, scheduler. I mean, hello. <laughs> you can hire me at this point. You know what I'm saying for the office. <laughs> I'm an executive assistant. Like I do this. So, yeah, exactly. I agree with you. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I definitely agree. But I love what you said because they do, they even have a more interesting identity than I do because I'm definitely like Puerto Rican and I've embraced the fact that, like I said, I embrace my, you know, African roots. I embrace oh, sure. my, you know what I'm saying? My yeah, Caribbean roots, all that. But I also will say that for them, their father is like traditional black. He ain't Latino black. He just black. Okay. He's black <laughs> you know, dreadlocks and all. You know, I like the word traditional. <laughs> Yeah, traditional black. I like that. We're gonna use that. So, right. So for them, you know, and I got my oldest, which is hilarious too. Like to add even more complexity, she is light skin, like super light. So she's lighter than myself. But the girl wears locks. Like she wanted it. She wanted to be like her father. She has sister locks. She gets the best compliments when we're out. Not necessarily from from people who don't who understand her hair, but from people who do though. So that's the funny part. Like you said, you introduce braids to your community. I can imagine right. some of the, you know, you got, I'm pretty sure you might have gotten some compliments, but you also probably got some stares. Some oh, yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Like you yeah, said. What is that? that? What yeah. is that? Exactly. <laughs> oh, and hair. So, and I, and I know, you know, and I, you know, I'm curious about it. Were you always allowing them to touch the hair? Did you back it up? Did you use it as a teaching opportunity? 
Well, okay. So when I was younger, I I didn't know about the touching. So I they would touch it, and I was like, oh, it's braids, and I would just walk away, you know. And um, there were, you know, I had some incidences, you know, people that were smarty pants, as it were, back in those days, and they wanted to like, oh, you think you're something, and I, I didn't even know what they were talking about, you know. I had no idea. It's just my hair, and um, so my mom, you know, and. My mom wanted me to be okay. So she, this is, this is so funny. She goes out and she buys whatever it is. I don't even know. It was, it, at the time in the seventies, there was only one type of straightener. I don't remember the name of it. Like, you know, hair process to make your hair straighter. Right. She took my braids out. Think of the movie Crooklyn. Think about that. And, 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 aunt and her aunt, taking her beads and things out, you know, and took her hair out. And then my mom straightened my hair, but I was so very sensitive that all of my hair fell out because I couldn't take it. So she, she freaks out. My, I'm, I have, I'm swollen all over. Okay. And I couldn't go to school because I'm swollen, you know, and I, and I understood what my mom was trying to do because I was telling her that they didn't understand what, what was wrong, you know, my hair. And so I had to go to school with a wig on. Now, girl, bye. Hello, no. So, <laughs> I, I, I am, you know, I, I didn't know anything about a child having cancer, having to wear a wig. I didn't know none of that stuff, I, you know. And I'm, and I got this wig on. And so, as a, as a kid, you took it about nine years old. Okay. When I get hot, what I do? I peel it off, and I just fan. You know, <laughs> so I'm bald and, and the people, they're looking at me like, what are you doing? So again, I got, what is that? They, they didn't know what a wig was. So here we go. So I go home, right? I'm talking, I'm saying, mom, this is not working. This is not working. Give me a hat or something. And my, you know, pretty soon my hair started growing back. I was miserable. I was completely, completely miserable. So you knew how long my hair had to take to grow back in. Cause I was Lower than the zero, I was smooth. My skin was so smooth. So it started growing back in. I had to wear like a head rag, and boy, did I hate that because you know it looked it, it didn't look like what we what we know how to tie now. It was, didn't look great. It wasn't great. It wasn't great looking, and I didn't like that, you know. And I was some sort. I was like a tomboy at the time, so I was really into sports, and it was just the most irritating thing ever. But I had to learn to love my hair. So I always had, um, I love, you know, I always loved earrings ever, forever, you know, during my modeling years, all, I love them, earrings, earrings. Um, but I always had to have a different hairdo, like, you know, so because I was modeling, it was always a different hairdo. Um, I never liked the wigs things, that wasn't me. But underneath all of that, because I had to wear the makeup, I, I hated that, as you can see, I'm on, on, on. I hated that, and, um, I grew to, 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 once I took in my hair down to number one on my own, I grew to understand that I was hiding under a whole lot of stuff, a whole lot of stuff. And just from shaving my hair, it's almost like Samson, Samson when he was like getting revelation about himself. And once I did that, I was like, oh boy, I've been hiding behind a whole lot of stuff. Shoulda, couldas, I was behind, behind. Don't you ever, you know, all these ultimatums I was giving people. I would, def, you know, as they call it, the, the, what is it called? The, um, when the resting B face, I had that on. I had it on, girl. I had, I had perfected it. Okay. Nobody was talking to me. I had it, I had it hooked up. Like they would look at me, like, oh, turn, go the other way. They, I had it, I was a master of the, the resting B face. Okay. I was hiding behind all of that stuff. And once I did that, I started all the stuff started saying, you know, come out. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm hearing it all, you know. And it had nothing to do with my hair. It had to do with I made this one decision. That was something that was impeding me from just being regular. Like I would get up in the morning like, I don't want to do my hair. You know, I really honestly... This don't make no sense. You got to blow dry. I, I didn't want to do all that. I really didn't. I really didn't. And I was like, but it was processed. So, it, you know, you had to, I had the nails on. Now, I ain't, I'm not saying nobody else. I'm talking about Edna. 
Okay, let me just not in, in, introduce. I don't want to. I don't want to introduce it. I, I don't like them, but I said for Edna, I had the nails on, costing me all this money. I ain't never traveled nowhere. Do my hair, and between doing my nails, I ain't never traveled nowhere. Do you know? Once I stopped doing that, I had so much money that I, I was traveling every other month. It was ridiculous. It was really ridiculous. But it was a decision that I made at that point. It freed me up, and um, it made me just so aware. Was I was able to hear things? You know, like you said, hear what the universe is saying to me, and I was free. And that is what gave me the, the, the strength to kind of say, yeah, this is it. This is it. I'm on the right track, you know. And I started doing the yoga and the meditation. Yeah, this is it. This is it. And I moved to China for a year and I said, yeah, this is it. And, and before I knew it, all of these things, these, these amazing opportunities just started presenting themselves because I was open. And you have to be open for, to, to receive because it's okay to, to you know, when we ask, sometimes we're not open to receive. We can ask. Be like, where is everything at? I'm waiting for all this. The universe, what's going on here? Like, I'm asking, but you're not receiving because you're not listening and you're not being open to that could be an opportunity. She could be an opportunity. He could be an opportunity. This book on the floor that dropped on your foot could be an opportunity. We don't think like that. And, we, and those are signs from the universe for us, you know, Ooh, we're really good. <laughs> See, that's why I'm like, all these gems now, y'all, let's still take it. This could be your sign <laughs> right now. It could be your sign. Oh, uh, but I agree. I definitely agree that, you know, and that's what it, and so I, and, so, and that's what I love too, is that, you know, he, even with hair, so like, even with something, like all of these things are markers of your identity and like yes. parts of your journey. And so that's why I just feel like if we have anybody watching, right, who's like, okay, so yeah, this is something I've been wanting to get into, like, I just <laughs> want to ask that question. I'm actually kind of mad this isn't live, so I can make my comment. But so, you know, we're at least trying to give you at least, you know, something with that. But I will say that, yeah, it, it is a big part of people's identity. That's why I think it should be respected, though. I think that's- Oh, what yeah, I'm absolutely respected. Exactly. Absolutely. So it's like, you know, so if, if you've ever heard about it, like for, like I said, because I know I think we have like quite a, like an interesting array of people, you know, who watch um, the mm -hmm. show. I just think that, you know, that's what we're just trying to drive home is that, you know, that's what it is. You know, for some, it's a big, it is a big deal. And in your it case, is. you were wearing a wig just for utility purposes. This is actually yeah. something, you know, useful. Um, but right. for others, unfortunately, yeah, it might be because of sign of their treatment or whatever. Right. But it's also like, that's why I think it's, it also would be nice, right? If we would just not automatically look at people's heads and assume that we know things about them. Because that's right. what was happening with you. They was thinking you were a whole cancer patient. Right. Like, <laughs> actually, no. This was just a useful thing that I was doing. And like, it was and very great, useful, like, let me tell you. Yeah. And I'm actually in great, like so. right, and I'm actually in great health, little do you know. So it's just yeah. like, what? So it's just incredible that that, you know, can be it. But I do think that that is the you know big deal though is that like definitely yeah that. and I think too speaking of um you know fashion and all that and then you I like how you just dropped in there casually that you used to model so you know no big deal because you know you do it all but I also love I, do I like, did I was young no I love that I'm the you going but once a model always a model now you know what I'm saying that's why you raised it why. but so I just feel like um no I actually did love your earrings so you um with that so do you still like are you, you know, do you, um, are there places in particular that you go with it? Because I do actually love the earrings that you have on, even currently. Thank I love you. Oh, yes. yes. Um, well, oh, yeah. my sisters, they always kind of seem to bless me like that. I have besties and they're always sending me, oh, this is Edna, gotta send this, send this to them. So I love every, like whenever I go to a different country, I buy earrings from the country, from that country. So I love earrings. I mean, I have very, you know, eclectic earrings set. Um, collection. As my my granddaughter, she's six. She says, "You have a collection of earrings, and I wear them all. Believe it, believe it or not, I wear them all. And if I don't, I give some away. But I I wear them all. Yeah. Nice. See, um, and this is a good opportunity, by the way. I've actually seen people make statements like with their earrings. So like, I actually follow because you know on Instagram, I'm I'm you know pretty intentional about who I like to follow on my social media, right. and like, you know, different um, people. Um, and they're not all influencers, but they do provide an influence just with the platform right. that they have and all those things that yeah. they do. And so, yep, absolutely. Like, I feel like there's a lot of cool statements that you can, but being that it is Black History Month, it is a great idea that support as many Black, you know, businesses as you can. And oh, so, absolutely. You know, there's a lot of great uh, Black artists that do make yeah. it, so they actually make great, 
fashion. They do provide yeah. great earrings, you know, and things like that. So there's a lot that, you know, it's a great opportunity um, yeah. to support and get out there, but also like, you know, and like I said, not only make a statement, but just have something beautiful, to be honest. And so right. I just feel like, you know, there's a chance to have that, you know, and be able to show it in that way, but then, you know, also be able to show um, that authentic, you know, support. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yes. But so with that, you have, there's been a lot of diversity, um, you know, like uh, recognitions that you received, you know, you were mm -hmm. honoree, you're also yeah. like the current branch president and all of that. So I'm also curious, even with that, obviously, I, it's clear to me that you've maintained your authentic self, you know what I mean, throughout all the journeys that you had. And also super cool, the other super cool one that you breezed through was uh, lived in China for a year. So that's super cool. Like not everybody could say that. So it's like, it's you clearly have had a very colorful life. You know what I mean? So it's yeah, just like, it. you've done so many things that like, you just say them so casually and I'm over here like, wow, that's <laughs> cool. Like maybe I can like live in China or, you know, so it just, it's great. I love, I think it's, you know, it's obviously painted this great, you know, opportunities for you. And, you, you know, it just right. even refreshed your perspective that was already so great, you know, that yeah. you had. But I'm curious about that. So like with all the work that you do, how was it that you were able to be a branch into this diversity work? How was it? I'm sure it's something that's near and dear to your heart, but how mm. is it that you got into it? You know what I mean? And what is it, you know, what are the causes that you're like fighting for? You know, all of that. So how I um, got into um, being one of the executives of the NAACP is I, um, I love working with, again, women of color, the community that I'm in, or you know, even with men um, working on their businesses. I love just like helping them with their businesses, being a problem solver. And um, um, I, you know, I, I remember one distinct young man, um, he wasn't really young, he was like 40, but he, he you know, he was, came from prison. I love to work with um, those who are from reentry. And so he was saying, I really want this job and this union job, but I don't know how to put the application and put the, the uh, resume together. So we worked together and he was talking to me. And so he said to me, um, he said some uh, street word. And I said, oh, wait, first of all, pretend I'm the boss. Speak to me as though you were speaking to the boss. I said, although I know what you mean, because I have sons your age, <laughs> I want you to start speaking as though that you're, you know, like he said, um, the dude, he said the dude, you know, that he was talking about someone who met for the interview. And I said, no, 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 what was his name? And he said, I don't know. I said, yeah, because you, you stuck dude in there. I said, find out his full name and call him by his full name. Cause I'm sure he's gonna call you by your full name. So I said, start acting like you want that job. You don't act like you. You're not speaking like you want the job. And so we worked together, we did his resume, and he called me up, and his wife called me and said he got the job. She was so very excited. They were very excited. It was a union job, which, you know, paid him a lot of money. So he was very excited. He's, you know, he was like, he sang my praises to the chamber, you know, oh, she helped me on her own time, and, you know, and so being involved with the businesses, you know, and, and, and the business district uh, uh, all together. And um, I helped create what they call a land, uh, land trust plan for um, a, a town near me called Gordon Heights. So in Gordon Heights, they didn't have business districts. They didn't have, you know, they had the, the schools and stuff like that, but it was in another area. So they wanted us to lay out a plan on what we could bring to the community to make it better. So I was part of that creation. So down through the years, as we did everything, um, I would, you know, um, uh, um, Hazel Dukes, who's amazing from the NAACP. She's the president. I think she's like 80 something years old now, but she's amazing. She, re she remembers everybody's name. I, I, I was like, I want her memory. I really want her memory because she remembers everybody's name. She can call everybody's name. She's a powerhouse in her right. Um, she, uh, I did something. I don't even know what I did, to be honest. And I was at one of the meetings and she called my name. I was like, somebody call my name. Like, you know, I'm like, cause I'm not really doing anything. I'm like, I must've been munching on something, eating or something. I was like, did somebody say my name? And, and she said it again, where are you? And I was like, oh, I got something on here. Uh, like, what's going on? And the, the, the president of our branch recommended me and she goes, I heard you did a great job. And I'm like, holy smokes. Like, it was like, almost like meeting a celebrity to, to hear her call my name out. Like, it was, it was amazing. So that started my journey 
in the NAACP. I was elected um, the, the um, executive chair of the economic development and housing. So my specialty, 20 years I've been a um, licensed broker um, for real estate. So that's my specialty. But uh, the economic development portion comes from, uh, you know, me working with the chamber and helping businesses and, and um, small businesses and business uh, brick and mortar businesses in the community. So um, I love helping them because, you know, I, I run off the stats all the time. It's like, you know, how many, you know, black owned businesses are, you know, I'm always doing workshops for getting people certified to be a minority owned business because there's so many contracts out there that we're, we're not privy to them. And not that we're not privy, it's just that they don't talk about them because they don't want us to have them. Absolutely. I'm going to keep that. That's on the side. Don't that on the side. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. Don't agree, though. <laughs> but um, I, that's how I started with the NAACP. Just, <laughs> so so yeah. um, that's how I got started. And, um, you know, I love doing it. And um, I'm always on, feet on the ground, you know. Right. Like you said, feet on the ground, which is what I love. Not boots, but yes, specifically feet on the ground work. And I definitely agree. Yeah. I definitely think that, you know, and, and again, like we said, it, it takes genuine individuals like yourself, you know, being able to like have those, lead those efforts. And that was beautiful is that you were genuinely discovered, literally just in your yeah. genuine, just your genuine self, not even trying to like, you know, have that spotlight on you. You just naturally, it came to you though, because you were doing genuine work and you mm -hmm. helped people and you got recognized for it, you know, so yeah. I just, Again, it's your the universe has definitely looked out for you on multiple occasions. Clearly, <laughs> the universe got your back. It definitely has your back, but it can definitely have all of ours too if we just do that, right? If we're if we're living in our truth, you know what I mean. If we're really being authentic to ourselves, it's kind of like if we do not betray ourselves first, then the universe right. won't betray us either. You know what I mean? I think right. Sometimes exactly. we don't realize we're right. We're the ones that commit the betrayal first, and then we're wondering. Right. But but <clears throat> excuse me, I can also understand why that betrayal takes place because right. we've been betrayed by others right so sometimes oh, sure. it becomes all we know and so like you right. said i mean you were with everything that you said you know it's easy to forget sometimes honestly that you were a childhood abuse survivor you know you almost you almost want to i know unfortunately you can't right when you have something right. like that happen but clearly right. you don't that's not all you have to be you're clearly not defined by that abuse that you mm -hmm. have because clearly you've been able to do so much more yeah. so i just think that it's just you know beautiful that you've been able to do that so like that's definitely beyond amazing but i'm glad you also mentioned that because yes that's right i didn't um you were definitely you had a whole career in real estate so that is yeah. true like you also did that and so i and it's wonderful that you were able to create you know your career on that um like that footing in that like knowing how right. knowledge, that knowledge base and then mm -hmm. now to use it to then help others and build their opportunity so it's just incredible yeah. to like to see that grow but then right. also be able to use it as this great support for other people and so yeah. the only other thing i'm curious about too is that that we didn't get a chance to touch on much was like and so the writing because clearly you've been published you know a couple times i don't know i don't remember the i don't remember the number 22 but um you know just saying like i mean was that <laughs> like your go-to like did you just was writing just always something you've done did some somebody put you on like how did that come about well um i journaled um because i was a childhood sexual abuse survivor i journaled so I wrote a lot of things. I wrote stories. I wrote uh, poems. I wrote a whole book. But I didn't publish them until I was in my 40s. They were written as I got older. They were 18, 24, 30 something. They, I had 10 books written in, in, in its entirety, but I never published them because I was shame and secrecy, of course, you know, kind of keeps you undercover. So um, not until I got my 40s um, that I still really started to stand up in my truth and say, you know, I can't be who I am. And because that is part of me, well, who I am. I'm not going to knock on people's door, like knock, knock. Hey, I was a child sexual abuse. I'm not going to do that. But when I'm asked a question, I'm going to say it, you know, I'm going to, you know, and I had to in the in the scheme of everything and learning around um, other uh, childhood sexual abuse survivors, a lot of them <clears throat> had um, they were still angry, so the stories were very vicious. Like like 
it was, if you read the book, you were triggered, even if you didn't have a trigger, you know, and I'd be like, you know, I don't want to be like, I want to, I want to be whole. I don't want to still be angry. <clears throat> and I had one of the ladies that um, was working with me. Um, and she was a great advocate for child, uh, child abuse. She was great, great. And um, I've spoken on her show once, but she always wanted somebody to pay. Like she wanted revenge. And it was like, kill that guy, you know? And I was like, well, what is that going to accomplish? You're not gonna still, it, it's, whatever happened to you, it still has happened and they could be dead. Let me tell you, it doesn't make a difference. They can be five foot under, they could be, you know, they could be even sent to jail. It doesn't matter, it still happened to you. Now, what are you gonna do with what happened to you? So <clears throat> I told her, I said, you know, um, I, I don't like how, I don't wanna be this way. I wanna be able, if someone asks me, I wanna be able to change how they feel and to, to give a result. Cause I was always solution oriented, even as a kid, like you know, I'd put, they'd be building, you know, sand and, you know, sand castles. I was like, what's the reason for that? I always, that was my question. What was the reason? My mother used to say, you should give me sick ass in that question. Well, why? And I, and what's the reason for that? Like, why are you doing that? What was, what are you going to get when you do that? And I was like, that. I was like that. And so I said, I, I told her, I said, what would you, what are you going to get from this? Like, how are you going to feel? Like, and um, two years ago, before COVID started, um, someone got in touch with me and said that she had a nervous breakdown, she tried to commit suicide. And I said, see, I didn't want to be that way. So when I wrote my books, it was all about how I could help somebody else. I didn't want to name names because I could do that myself to myself. Yeah, I know who my perpetrators were. You know what I'm saying? I could do that. But what would it do to, for me to write something that doesn't help somebody else? So my books are written non-trigger, non-trigger. They're non-trigger. They're, they're what affected me, you know, in my life and how it affected me. And, you know, some, some pieces of what happened. And then this is what you could do. This is what I tried to get over. And this is how it helped me. So writing it has been my therapy. It's always been my therapy, you know? So when I get in the writing mood, I'm, I, it's therapy, you know? And so um, that book uh, stuff, the, the, the story that no one told us about being an adult and a childhood sexual survivor, it's called stuff. That was um, picked up by an organization that's called RAIN, R-A-I-N-N. -N. It is now, and it's been for like 10 years, um, uh, preferred reading that they said they I spoke for them and they have my book on their website and they're, they're an international um, trauma sexual trauma organization so my book's there and that was very um, it was amazing to have my book there um, and still it still is there but it was, it's so amazing that um, I wasn't looking for that at all you know it was just I wanted to you know help someone so um, yeah. so my book has been, I think, all over the country, <laughs> all right. over the country. Yeah. And if and if y'all uh, catch, yeah. So even uh, we did like one Melissa's corner, and it's funny because I actually referenced Rain in uh, when yeah. we were talking about stalking because they have all these great statistics on everything. Like they have information yeah. on all of the violence and all that. So wow, that's yes, that's like super big time. That's like <laughs> making it to the big leagues when you do something like that. <laughs> So it's just, yeah, because they're definitely um, known. So with that, oh, that's like, I'm so glad you shared. And so definitely the final thing I want to know from you then is, you know, so what's next? What's next for Miss Edna White? You know, what, what do we got to look forward to? I, I don't know. I'm really open for whatever it is. Um, uh, I, I, you know, I don't want to do politics. I know that because I'm too uh, honest and too mouthy. <laughs> I think you and I, we wouldn't do well. We wouldn't do well. No, no ma'am. <laughs> You know, I am curating um, a book called Women Right Now, W-R-I-T-E, Right Now. Um, it's a story of all the traumas of, you know, people, uh, women who are um, writers that uh, overcome sexual abuse, the, um, domestic violence, any kind of traumas. I'm curating that. It should be out, um, coming out, I think in a couple of months, but we start pre-sales next month. 
and then it should be out in the summertime. So that's one thing that I'm really excited about um, because I, I got to curate it and it's a it's but it's real publisher a publisher asks me to cu curate a book so i'm right. like really that's really yeah, super like, cool that? like a right. publisher asking me to do it so it was really great it's a, such an honor and i've met so many wonderful women um during doing this and i think um i'll just be open for the rest of the you know rest of whatever is going to happen so I'm open. Yeah, I'm really that. open. Which is like the best way to be. I love it. Just, <laughs> you know, and I, I mean, we did say to cry with an agenda, but it's yes. also good to be open to like leave open possibilities too to that agenda. So right. I love that you're also just right. I like that. open the possibilities. Yeah, yeah exactly. Adding that on <laughs> in. Got that from you though. That was synergy. You've obviously <laughs> been dropping gems the whole time. So I just want to add on a little bit. <laughs> Uh, but no, I think that that is incredible. I think that's wonderful. And I definitely encourage everyone else to take advantage of that. And it's just, there's a lot, obviously, that we can uh, find with you. I heard Amazon, I heard other places, but definitely with this new work, we should definitely support it because that sounds really amazing. And um, I would love to learn more about the women that you connected with as well. Like a little bit about like what we talked about. So with that, could you let us know how people can find you if they want to connect with sure, you? Sure, absolutely. You can find me. My website is this is for you dot com that's okay. simple right yep. and you can find you can google me on amazon edna j white you can find me on facebook edna j white and you can find me on instagram ejw coaching and so i'm all the way around so you'll find me i'm you know i i, I try to be everywhere but thankfully i have an assistant now i'm so excited Yay, I have a cool <laughs> I have a team, so I am really excited. Um, so I am everywhere. Um, you know, um, I'm going to be doing an initiative. Uh, actually, I'm getting a grant to work with the community to work with uh, seniors and coach them. So I'm really excited. This year, look for me in, your, in the community, and I'm getting a state grant to do that. So I'm really excited and, and thankful for the givers of that. So it's exciting. Yay, awesome. So yeah, love it, love it, love it. So definitely y'all heard it here. Please connect, find whichever way you know you prefer, but she's definitely available on multiple platforms. So there is no excuse yes. to be able to not be able to find her somewhere. Um, <laughs> so definitely do it. Um, and so with that, thank you so much, Edna, for being thank on you, Melissa, thank pleasure. you so much. Um, yes. Yes, thank you. And thank you all for tuning in. See yes. You.